praise you. We thank you. We lift up your name. Father, you're an awesome God. And your principles are awesome, Father. And you give us the tools that we need, Father, to overcome, to overcome the enemy, to overcome our circumstances. You, Father, are our strength and our rock and our hope and our peace and our great physician. And you are all that we need. And so we turn to you, we look to you, and we ask you right now, pour out your anointing, renew our minds by the washing of your word, renew and transform our hearts, Father, uh, reveal yourself to us, and I pray right now, Father, that this message will give us the proper tools that we need to help us in our walk with you, to give you honor and glory in everything we do, in Jesus' name. Now, I'm going to do it a little different tonight than I usually do it. First of all, you get one of those rare instances where you actually get to see me in glasses. <laughs> because I'm going to be reading from the pineapple story. And rather than, rather than you guys see the back of me or the side of me through the video, this way they can see the front of me by, by me reading through the book. Okay, the pineapple story. How to conquer anger. And, oh, great. Let me see. All right. Your computer is trying to make you angry. It's Wait. What is that? Kill her. Wait. You want to wait? Yeah, just the actual. Wait. Okay. There we go. All right. All right. We got dancing pineapple. Yes. Okay. The blessing. Baruch Atah Zonai Elokeinu Melech Halom Hasher Natan Lasekvi Vena Lahavkin. Bain Yom Uvain Laila. Blessed are you, Lord our God, King of the universe, who gave the heart of understanding to distinguish between day and between night. Yes. Well, you know, like I said, all day long, the enemy's been trying to get me to move in the flesh. And it's like when you go to do a teaching on, on how to conquer anger, the first thing you're going to run into is anger. <laughs> all right. Let's see here. Let me move next frame. Okay, pineapple story. Here we go. Pineapple story, how to conquer anger. Now, we're going to try again. Okay. The pineapple story took place in Dutch New Guinea. It covered a period of seven years. It is a humorous yet profound illustration of applying a basic scriptural principle. As you uh, read this firsthand, or as you hear this secondhand <laughs> um, account, you will discover that it is a classic example of the kinds of struggles which each of us faces until we learn and apply the principle of yielding personal rights. And basically, that's what this is going to be about today. It's going to be about us surrendering our rights, surrendering ourselves to God. Now... I gotta remember to do my little clicker here, though. No, you should um, do that for you. This is coming from the. I, I actually heard this guy speak at a Bill Gother seminar before, and um, unfortunately, it was much funnier when he said it. But you're just gonna have to deal with what you get from me on this. <laughs> my family and I work with these people way back in the bush. One day, I decided that I was going to bring in some pineapples. The people had heard of pineapples. They had tasted them but they didn't have any source to get them. So, I got them from another mission station. I got about 100 plants. Then, I got one of the local men to work for me. He planted all these pineapple shoots for me. I paid him, of course. I paid him salt or whatever he wanted for the days he worked. It seemed to take awfully long for those little shoots of pineapples to become big bushes and finally yield pineapples. It took about three years. Back in the jungle, you long for fresh fruit. You don't get much fresh fruit or vegetables. So finally that third year, we could see fresh pineapples coming on. And we were just waiting for Christmas time because that's when they're ripe. And when Christmas finally came, my wife and I would go for a walk to see if any were ripe enough to eat. You're already advanced. Oh, okay. Finally, when they got ripe, we didn't get a single one of them. The natives stole every one. <laughs> they stole them before they were ripe. That is their art. Steal it before it's ripe or the owner gets it. 
Now, here I am, a missionary, getting mad at these people. Missionaries aren't supposed to get mad. You all know that, but I got angry. I said, look, you guys, I have been waiting for these pineapples for three years. I didn't get any of them. Now, there are others getting ripe, and if any more of these pineapples are stolen, no more clinic for you guys. So he's putting down the law. He says, my wife was running a clinic. She was giving them all their pills free. They didn't have anything to pay with. Advanced slide. Chauncey, oh. get somebody to advance somebody it. Else. You know what? I'm going to have somebody else. You want to run no, the slides? <laughs> you just, all you do is hit this button right there every time I go to the next page. Okay? All right. We're on it right now. Okay. My wife was running a clinic. She was giving them all their pills free. They didn't have anything to pay. They were knocking our, we were knocking ourselves out trying to help these people, taking care of their sick, saving the lives of their babies. One by one, the pineapples got ripe, and one by one, they were stolen. <laughs> so I felt I had to stand my ground with these people. I couldn't just let them run all over me. But that was not really the reason. It was a selfish reason. I wanted to eat those pineapples. So, no more clinic. Then they let their sick babies die. They couldn't care less. Life was cheap over there. People with bad pneumonia would be coughing and begging us for medicine. We would say, no, remember you stole our pineapples. I didn't steal them, they would say. It was the other guys that did it. And they would go on coughing and begging, and we couldn't take it any longer. I broke down and said, okay, tomorrow morning we will open the clinic again. When we opened the clinic, they started stealing the pineapples, and I felt bad again. Man, this, these rascals! I, you know, I don't know if he puts it in the book here, but one of the things he said when he was talking on it before, he goes, I'd be such a good missionary if it wasn't for these thieving people! <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> now, but finally, we found out who was doing it. The guy who had planted them. I called him on the carpet and said, Look, buddy, what are you doing stealing my pineapples? You or my gardener? He said, My hands plant them, my mouth eats them. That is the rule of the jungle. If they plant something, that is theirs. They had never heard of the idea of paying for services. This was a new concept to them. So he said, they are all mine. I said, oh no, they are mine. I paid you to plant them. But he just couldn't understand how that made them in my plants. I thought, well, what do I do now? It was the rule of the tribe. I'd better learn to live by their rules. So, I said, all right, I will give you half of these plants. Everything from here to over there is yours. If they get ripe, they are yours. And these are mine. <coughs> he sounded like he was in agreement, but my pineapple still got stolen. <laughs> then I thought, hmm... Maybe I should let them have all those pineapples, and I'll get some new ones. But I knew that I would have to wait three more years. That was hard for me to do. Finally, I said, look, I will give you all these pineapples, and then I will start all over again. Now, you make a garden, and you take all these pineapples out of my garden, so I will have room to plant new ones. I don't want your pineapples in my garden if you feel they're yours. So they said, Tuwan, which means outsider, foreigner. No. Yeah. You will have to pay us. <laughs> I said, now look. They said, no, no, no. You were asking us to move your pineapple bushes and that is work. 
So now they understand. Now they are mine, I said. All right, I'll pay you one day's work to take them all away. Then they said, we don't have a garden ready. Will you pay us to get it ready? I said, forget it. I was so fed up with them. Now, I told my wife, this is impossible. I am just going to pay some guy to root them all out and throw them on the trash heap. Mm -hmm. Then, if they want them, they can just take them. So we did. We rooted them all out and threw them on a heap. That was hard to do. They were nice pineapple bushes. Then I bought new plants. Mm -hmm. I said, now look, all you guys, I am going to pay you to plant them, but I eat them. Me and my family. You don't eat any. He hasn't learned his lesson yet, no. I said, look, I don't have time to mess with the garden. I have too much to do. There are so many of you, and there is only one of me. You have got to help me. I want you to plant them, and I will eat them. You know where this is going? Yes. Yeah. Yes. I said, I will pay you. What do you want? I will give you this nice knife if you will agree to do it. <clears throat> they started to think, he will pay us that knife so he can eat our pineapples. <laughs> Finally, they agreed. During the next three years, I reminded the guy who planted them, look, who is going to eat these pineapples? He said, you are. I said, fine. Have you still got the knife? He said, yes. I said, well, take good care of it. If he lost the knife, I'm in trouble again. The pay is gone. <laughs> Finally, after three more years, the pineapples began to ripen. Yeah. My wife and I walked through the garden again. I said, man, pretty soon we are going to have a crop of our own pineapples. Yes. Yeah. We started to thank God that he was providing them for us. But do you know what happened? <laughs> Every one of them was stolen. Every one of them. I would see the natives go through the garden in the daytime to spot where the pineapples were, and then at night, they would be able to go right to them. I thought, what am I going to do? We can't cut out the clinic. Let's cut out the trade store. That's where they get their matches, their salt, their fish hooks, the things like that. They used to do without them, that won't kill them. I said, okay, no more store. You stole my pineapples. And when he closed the store, they began to say, we had better leaves, we, we'd better leave because we don't have any salt. And if he is not going to have a store, there's no advantage for us being here with him. Mm -hmm. We might as well go back to our jungle houses. So they took off to live in the jungle. There I was, sitting by myself, eating pineapples. <laughs> no people, no, no ministry. ministry. Right. I said to my wife, look, we can eat pineapple back in the States. I mean, if that is all we are here to do, right? I mean, a runner returned and said, get them all back. We will open the store next Monday. I thought and thought, how am I going to get to eat those pineapples? There must be a way. Then I got an idea. A German shepherd. I got the biggest German shepherd I could get on the island. I brought him in there and let him loose. They were afraid of him. They had never seen a dog that big. They had little mangy dogs. They never fed them. They were all diseased. And there was this well-fed German shepherd dog. They looked at the food he got. I would always have to feed him when the people weren't around because they would resent the dog's food. <laughs> it was better than anything they got. But that dog did the trick. Most of the people didn't dare come around anymore. So now we had the same result as closing the store. People didn't come. 
Didn't have anybody to talk to. I couldn't get anybody to teach me the language. I thought, what do I, what do we do? The dog wasn't working, but in the meantime, the dog was starting to breed with the village dogs and would raise up a wicked half shepherd, wild and hungry. The doctor said, look, if your kids or anybody gets bitten by that dog, I am not going to treat them. He was using the same tactics on me that I was using on the natives. I said to my wife, we got to get rid of the dog. Well, I got rid of the dog. I hated to do it. Now the dog was gone. The people came back and no more pineapples. I thought, boy, there must be a way. What can I do? Then I came home on furlough and went to a basic youth seminar with Bill Gother. I learned that we must give everything we own to God. The Bible says, if you give, you will have. If you keep for yourself, you will lose. Mm. Give your things to God, and God will see that you have enough. This is a basic principle, right? Now, part of what he's not telling you on here is, when he went back on furlough, part of the reason he went back on furlough was, he was getting so angry at the natives that he gave himself ulcers. Oh, wow. And he had to go back to go see a doctor. Mm -hmm. And the doctor said, if you don't get your anger in control, you're going to die. Yeah, so basically, what you're going to find, whether it's anger or, or any type of sin, it will eat you from the inside out. Moving on, I thought, man, I don't have anything to lose. I will give that pineapple garden to God because I am not eating the pineapples anyway. Yeah. Now... I know that is not a very good sacrifice. You are supposed to sacrifice something that's valuable to you, right? But I would give it to God and see if he could control it. I said, man, I'm going to see how he is going to do it, right? So I stood out in the garden one night. The people had gone home. I didn't want them to see me out there praying. I prayed, Lord, see these pineapple bushes? I have fought to have fruit from them. I have claimed them. I have stood up for my rights. It is all wrong and I realize it now. I have seen that it is wrong and I give them to you. From now on, if you want me to eat any of your pineapples, fine. You just go right ahead and give them to us. If not, fine. It doesn't really matter. So I gave them to God and the natives stole the pineapples as usual. I thought to myself, see God, you can't control them either. <laughs> I like this. One of the things with it too is it, there are little things he put when he was talking about this where he was saying, he was saying, God, who would you rather have the pineapples? These thieving people or your missionary who's doing your work? <laughs> Like the, the, yeah. you, you see a little bit of a flaw in the attitude with the concept here, right? Yeah. So he goes on to say, Then one day they came to me and they said, Two one. In other words, you know, outsider. Lord. You have become a Christian, haven't you? <laughs> I was ready to react and say, Look here, I have been a Christian for 20 years. But instead I said, Why do you say that? They said, because you don't get angry anymore when we steal your pineapples. This was the real revelation. Now I was living what I had been preaching to them. I had been telling them to love one another, to be kind to one another, and I had always been standing up for my rights, and they knew it. Finally, one bright lad started thinking, and he said, now, why don't you get angry anymore? I said, I have given that garden away. It isn't my garden anymore. So you are not stealing my pineapples. I don't have to get angry anymore. Another guy started to think even more. And he said, who did you give the garden to? Now, now when they think in that country, the way they do it, they, they tap their nose. They do this thing with their nose like this when they're thinking. That's how they think. Like that, you know. So you see them, you know when they're thinking, because you see them doing this, you know. 
You think maybe that's what I do with the size of my nose, huh? All right. He said, another guy started to think even more and said, who did you give the garden to? They looked around. Did he give it to you? Did he give it to you? <laughs> Whose is it anyway? Whose pineapples are we stealing? Uh -huh. Then I said, well, actually, see, he's saying right here, he said, but, you know, he's cutting the book short on it. You know, he was so, he was so upset by finding out that all these years he thought he was a Christian. Mm -hmm. sure. To find out he barely became a Christian. <laughs> <laughs> that he tells the guys, he says, I'll tell you tomorrow. Yeah. Let's come back tomorrow and I'll tell you who I gave him to, right? Mm -hmm. And he's just overstraught. He's thinking, here, all these years I thought I was a Christian, and here I barely became a Christian now, right. you know. So, but come back the next morning, and he tells his, uh, he tells his wife, watch this, this is going to be good. He walks out there, the whole village is out there, and they're angry. And he's like, uh-oh, this isn't as good as I thought. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, he goes on to say, then I said, I have given the garden to God. And they said, to God? Hasn't he got any pineapples where he is? <laughs> I said, I don't know whether he has or not, but I have given it to God. Mm -hmm. And they went to the village and said, Do you know whose pineapples we are stealing? Tuwan has given them to God. They all started thinking about that one. Mm -hmm. They came back in a group and said, Tuwan, you should not have done it. Why don't you get them back from God? No wonder we aren't getting the pigs when we go out hunting. No wonder our babies are getting sick. No wonder our wives are not giving birth. No wonder the fish aren't biting. Then they said, we shouldn't steal them anymore if they are God, should we? Mm -hmm. now, now, the interesting part, because he doesn't put that in the book here, but he was saying, they ask him in the beginning, they, they tell him, they say, when did you give them to your God? And, he's, and he tells them, you know, yeah. so many moons Here ago, go, yeah. right? And, they, and then they start connect. doing the nose thing like this, and they're all, they're, it's all over the crowd, and they're all going with the nose on it, you know, and they get all upset, and they're like, you, you shouldn't have given them to you, God. You know, so they said, is he a big God? Said, oh, big God, big God. He made the river, and he made everything you see, and, and, and he created the day and the night, and he goes on telling them, oh, he's a big God, you know, and that's when they freaked out. Because that, that's when they realized the reason everything's been going wrong is we've been stealing pineapples from his God. Right. He goes on and says, they were afraid of God. Mm -hmm. So then the pineapples began to ripen. The natives came and said, two one, your pineapples are ripe. <laughs> I said, they are not mine. They belong to God. They said, but they are going to get rotten. <laughs> you had better pick them. And so I got some and I let the natives take some. And when my family sat down to eat them, I said, Lord, we are eating your pineapples. Mm -hmm. Thank you for giving them to us. Mm -hmm. And all those years, those natives were watching me and listening to my words. They saw that the two didn't match. But when I began to change, they did too. Soon, many of the natives decided to become Christians. Mm -hmm. The principle of giving to God was really working. I could hardly believe it myself. I started giving other things to God. One day my son was near death, and there was no way to get him to a doctor. I suddenly realized that I'd never given my son to God. So I prayed, God, I give my son to you. Whatever you want to do is fine. That was harder than giving God the pineapple garden. <laughs> Just a little. <laughs> I was prepared for God to take my son, but that night the fever broke and my son got well. Mm -hmm. Now another one of the things he doesn't tell you here in the book on it is he says, uh, you know, the, the people, they, they were compulsive thieves. They couldn't help themselves. And so what had happened was some of them, even though they feared the God, they would go in there and try to steal the pineapples anyway. Well, the ones that came to him to learn about God and learn about the Bible started guarding the pineapple patch. And, and they would actually stand guard and watch over it at night to make sure that nobody took God's pineapples. You know, um, The natives began bringing things for me to fix. I said, God, my time is yours. If you want me to fix harmonicas and pots and shovels out here on the, on the mission field, fine. 
I wasn't getting as much Bible translation done, but more and more people were being won to Christ. They kept saying, Two Juan has become a Christian. <laughs> We've been wanting to see a Christian. He's been talking about him for years. We wanted to see a Christian. Now, he tells us to love one another, and now he is starting to love us too. Wow. One day I was fixing a broken chair. A native saw me and said, Here, let me help you hold it. After we fixed it, I said, Well, aren't you going to ask me for any salt? He said, no, Tuwan, don't you remember? You helped me fix my shovel. Now I help you fix your chair. I thought, man, that is the first time they did anything for me without getting paid for it. Then one day I saw something in the Bible I had never noticed before. And when ye shall come into the land, and shall have planted all manner of trees for food, mm -hmm. Three years shall it be as uncircumcised unto you. It shall not be eaten of. But in the fourth year, all the fruit thereof shall be holy, to praise the Lord withal. And in the fifth year shall you eat of the fruit thereof, that it may yield unto you the increase thereof. I am the Lord your God. Leviticus 19, 23-25. Yeah. Finally, I understood. God never intended me to eat those pineapples the first year. They were ripe. He wanted me to dedicate them to Him. Yeah. Then He wanted me to give them to the natives so that they could see my good works and glorify my Father who was in heaven. If I had only done this, the natives would have urged me to eat the pineapples the fifth year. Man, all the trouble I could have avoided. <laughs> all the trouble I could have what saved. What about the babies that died? Yeah. I know. How sad, huh? That's very sad. It is very sad. Now, if you'll notice on here, basically, these are all different types of pineapples that we have. Yeah. Everybody has pineapples in our life. Different areas, different... I don't know if you remember the other day when I was talking about different areas of things that we say, you know what, God, you can go here, you can come here, but this little closet area I got here, yeah. that's kind of off limits to you. That's out of bounds, right? <laughs> And God's saying, look, I want all of you. I want everything. Sure. You know, We all have things that we try to hold on to. And we think we're giving them to God. But if we're getting angry, that's a, a surefire sign that we haven't given it to God. That we're still holding on to it. Sure. Technically, you can't get angry if you've already given up your rights. If you've already given something to God. Right. It's almost impossible to get angry. So if we're getting angry, it's because we're still holding on to something. I gotta stop and think what I was holding on to today. <laughs> yeah. All right. Now, how to give your pineapple garden to God? One. Recall what makes you angry. The missionary was angry with the natives for eating his pineapples. Maybe you get angry with your parents for not respecting your opinions or approving of your activities, or accepting the one you want to date. Perhaps you get angry with friends you say things about you, who say things about you that are not true, or for excluding you from their activities. You might even get angry at God for making you with a physical handicap, or putting you in a family that does not show love for each other. Right? Two, list your rights which others are violating. The natives were not respecting the missionary's right to eat his own pineapples. Maybe your parents are not respecting your rights. If you notice, he's usually dealing with younger Christians. So you get a lot of this parent stuff on here. But basically, we're all kids. We're all God's kids. And with any of it, it runs into the same categories. Any one of us here who's ever driven on the freeway here in California has dealt with issues. And so we all have anger issues because even my mom, who's like that far below God, right? She gets behind the wheel in, in California here and I'm she turns one. into this. <laughs> <laughs> all right. <laughs> Maybe your parents are not respecting the rights that you have to your own opinions, planning your own activities, or choosing your own friends. Perhaps your friends do not respect your rights 
your right to a good reputation or to participate in their activities. You may even feel that God is denying your right to enjoy health and a happy family. Three, transfer your rights to God. Picture yourself kneeling in the presence of God and putting all of your rights on His altar. Then, bow your head and tell God that you are giving them all to Him. He can do with them whatever He wants. This means you do not have any more rights of your own, of your own plans or your will or possessions or friends or opinions or reputation. All your rights belong to God. Four, purpose to thank God whatever happens. God may see that some of the rights that you gave to Him would be very harmful for your spiritual growth. He will withhold these from you and you can thank Him for it. Other rights may be loaned back to you. For these you can also thank God. Now they're not rights. They are privileges to be used for God's purpose. Five, use future anger as God's <clears throat> alarm system. When we give all our rights to God, we are demonstrating the quality of meekness. Meekness is yielding our rights to God. It is just the opposite of anger. Anger occurs when we demand our own rights. In fact, whenever we get angry, it is a signal that somebody has discovered one of our rights that we have not yet given to God. Because of this, we can use anger as an alarm system to search out rights and transfer them to God. When we follow these steps, we are obeying the instruction of Jesus. If any man will come after me, let him deny himself, take up his cross daily, and follow me. For whosoever will save his life shall lose it, but whosoever will lose his life for my sake, the same shall save it. For what is a man's advantage if he gains the whole world and loses himself, or be cast away? Luke 9, 23-25. Now, let this mind be in you which was in Christ Jesus. The principle of yielding rights is demonstrated by the Lord Jesus, Yeshua HaMashiach, when he who was God did not cling to his rights as God's equal, but set aside his rights and took upon himself the position of a servant. He lived a life of total obedience, even to dying on the cross for our sins. Because of this, God has highly exalted him and given him a name that is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow and every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. Philippians 2, 5 to 11. Now, did somebody ask, was somebody asking a question? No, okay.